Hey friends, I'm working to get caught up on all the videos on the Arch Cabin build like I had mentioned before and today wanted to provide you an update on the framing of the end caps that occurred on the Arch Cabin. I've had a lot of help from the Amish community here in the area where I live and they've done most of the carpentry work although I did help them. Their community does not participate in taking videos or photos of themselves, and I can respect that. So today what I wanted to do is kind of just walk you through the arch cabin and explain uh, a few things that we did in the carpentry work that may be beneficial to someone who's looking to do this in the future. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so this is the front end cap and you can see all the carpentry work has been completed there, all the framing as well as the OSB on the exterior. One thing that was unique about the arch cabin build is because it is arched, you can see that uh, we had to essentially have some framing that would arch along those steel ribs as well. This is a two by six by 16 board on the bottom. So it goes from the bottom up about 16 feet. And then you can see where we've got another one. I think that that one was a two by six by nine that we ended up using. But this board, you can see what the carpenter did. He actually sliced it about a half inch. Um, and he did that about every inch. And what that did was provide the flexibility that we needed in order to put that up against the arch rib and we used self-tapping screws to attach that board to the steel ribs. So if you're curious what self-tapping screws we used, there's the size. Uh, they are Tex number 14, two and a half inch self-tapping screws. One of the first things about the framing that I wanted to talk about and just the build in general so far has been the scaffolding that I had rented. I rented the scaffolding for about a month. That scaffolding has been an absolute lifesaver. I don't know how we would have done all of this without the scaffolding. I'm sure that people have done it probably with just ladders, but I just can't imagine the amount of difficulty that that would have been because it was still difficult even with the scaffolding. We felt much safer on the scaffolding than we would have if we would have been doing that with ladders. So again, I would recommend in, in the event that you are considering doing an arch cabin build, definitely uh, consider scaffolding as some of the equipment that, uh, that you use for that effort. Once we had both the end caps framed, we uh, actually moved on to the loft, which you can see here. And I've got that taking up about um, half of the arch cabin. So the length of my arch cabin is uh, interior wise is about 30 feet. And so I had that loft coming out about 15 feet. So we moved on to that and started that um, mainly because we wanted to get that done before we put the metal roofing on. And the reason is you can see that floor of the loft, it's got these long joists that go from side to side and they're supported by a large board there. But in order to get those joists up there, it's much easier to get an exact fit if you don't have that metal roofing on already because then that becomes something that you have to contend with as you're trying to get the appropriate measurements and the right cut. So we wanted to, to do this beforehand. All right, so I've moved to the exterior and this is the front end cap. And what we did next after we had the framing complete for both end caps and the framing of the loft complete inside, then we moved on to the OSB for the exterior. And so we put that on and of course the OSB is rectangular, so you're gonna have some that uh, kind of hang over the edges of the arch cabin. And in order to cut that off, we used a tool that's called the router. Um, and it's a pretty handy little tool that I had never used before. But I would recommend if 
if you're looking to build an arch cabin to look into that. Once we got the OSB on, we use this Tyvek home wrap to provide protection against any weather that we might have. We've actually had excellent weather during this build process, um, which is way different than what we had earlier in the year. You'll recall that uh, I was always talking about rain. We've actually not had rain at all since, uh, for about four weeks or so, since we really started going up with the cabin. But for that Tyvek, I actually got a nine foot by 150 foot roll. And we thought that that was gonna be way more than what we needed, but you know, in fact, it was, it was actually pretty close. I mean, I do have some left over, but uh, you know, not as much as you would think. And because it was nine feet tall, we only had to do that pretty much twice. And then I think there was a little piece up at the very top that we had to put on as well. So it actually made it pretty easy. Once we had the OSB and the Tyvek on the exterior, we actually moved back inside and we started to complete the subfloor for the loft. And we used a tongue and groove plywood, but we used this brand, it's called Avantech. And this is a, uh, it's kind of like an OSB but um, it's made much stronger than OSB. My understanding is it's got um, silicone in it, and it's supposed to be really good for a quiet floor, you know, one that, that doesn't really squeak. So, uh, believe it or not, this was actually less expensive than regular tongue and groove plywood, which my understanding is, is kind of odd but prices right now, as you may be aware, are kind of crazy all over the place. Anyways, this was one of the best things that we have done, I believe, uh, and if I would have known about this Avantech tongue and groove plywood, I probably would have used that on the main subfloor of the whole cabin, which we didn't. Um, this is regular tongue and groove plywood. But my understanding, again, is that this Avantech is uh, much stronger and will even, survive, you know, weather events, even if it were to get wet, which most OSB will not. So that's what we used, and we actually glued that down to the joist that I told you about earlier, and it keeps your floor from squeaking. I think that's the main advantage, and that's something we didn't do on the main subfloor of the cabin, which now I wish we would have. But, uh, you know, keep that in mind in, in the event you're ever gonna do this in the future or whatever cabin you may build or house, if you have a wood subfloor, you will definitely want to glue that down because it does help um, with squeaking in the future. And after doing the floor of the loft, then we started the framing here that you can see. This first room over here is about uh, a little over eight feet wide and 11 and a half feet long. This is going to be the bathroom. Um, it is kind of a large bathroom, but I am including a washer and dryer in there, but I'm doing a stackable unit, so it won't take up a lot of space. So hopefully should be, should be a good size for what I need it to do. And then next to that is a smaller room, but it's going to be uh, the pantry. All right, guys, so this is a loft. It's kind of hard to do it justice with uh, a camera, but the last framing that we did was just the other day. We completed this framing, which is for the walk-in closet. I was having some issues deciding where to exactly put that um, because my original design didn't quite work out as well as I would have wanted it to. So I've got it there and you can kind of see the overall loft here. Pretty spacious, and it's gonna have an excellent view of the front of the cabin area, which is where the creek is. The windows and doors that we have installed, these were actually just installed uh, this past week or so, and we waited until after we had the metal roofing on before we did that. And the main reason was because we were concerned with all the work at heights, you know, with metal and, and tools and stuff. If we were to get up there and accidentally drop something, it could potentially break 
a window or the glass doors. So we didn't want to take that chance. So those were kind of the more recent items that we've completed. And actually speaking of the metal roofing, um, stay tuned for the next video to see how I prepared for installing the metal roof and the chimney. Let me tell you, it was quite an adventure. Take care guys.